this is episode two, which is going to be the connection of the solar charge controller. These are the parts and pieces. Moving up a little closer here. Here's your solar charge controller, your energy, and then the box next to it. Also, there's this little, put it in your cigarette lighter socket inside the little guy max and it gives you the voltage on the battery so you don't have to be going out to take a look at the screen here on this guy to see what the voltage is you can monitor it with this piece here and also has a usb port and another connector for the android new android phones those two yellow pieces there are two connectors uh to splice in the fuses uh they're size 10 to 12 gauge and you can get those at Home Depot. The other thing is, is you have over here uh, a fuse box. I bought this on Amazon. It came with 10 fuse connectors. You're going to need two. One fuse for the solar panel, which is a 20 amp. And then you're going to need a 10 amp for the battery connection. So I get this little box here. And all these are the ones that fit inside the little guy makes power panel. So that's sort of slick, all these different uh, sizes and everything else. So that worked out nice. And then this piece here is your battery clamps to connect your to your battery to your solar charge controller. And these two cables here are 10 foot cables. At this end, it's bare, and that'll go into your solar controller. And then these ends here go into your solar panel. So it's a pretty simple setup. You also need some zip ties you can pick up at Home Depot. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the assembly together, show you that. Here is the assembled uh, solar charge controller and we have the tools needed. You're going to need a drill and a drill bit to drill wood. Um, you've got uh, diagonals, pliers, a knife, those two on the right are actually from a Harbor Freight. Uh, it's got the different bits. We've got a Phillips head and uh, a small screwdriver in there. And that one on the right actually goes in the drill with a Phillips head. And over here is this Harbor Freight package that I've quite handy. It has everything you need. Over here on the right, you got all these different bits you can put in the socket for the hand piece or for the drill. Uh, you got some. Uh, metric American uh, sized uh, wrenches you got sockets you got quarter inch and three-eighths you got screwdrivers you got players you got needle nose anyways this uh, has worked out really well for me even the little special uh, screw head you need for inside the little guy makes a little square one it's in those that package over there got Allen hand wrenches some smaller screwdrivers anyways back to over here to the assembly we got the uh, the Wanderer, okay, over here is the solar panel connection, plus, minus. You got to remember, red is plus, and negative is black. And so next to that, you've got the battery connection. And over here, you got a little low thing. I'm not going to be using that. I guess you can put a light bulb or something on there. It doesn't apparently carry much current on it. And so you got the fuse connectors here with this is your cable right here it's going to hook up to the solar panel now on this remember this guy here at the other end connects to the negative on the solar panel and your fuses go into the positive so here we have a 20 amp fuse you look at the manual i'm going to be using two panels max um they're saying two panels minimum is 18 amp fuse I'm using a 20 and then over here for the battery you've got a 10 amp fuse they're saying that the battery should be fused for 10 amp and it's a 10 amp controller so it makes a lot of sense over here I've marked battery one panel two when you're connecting the solar controller you got to hook up the battery first do not hook up the panel you'll blow up the solar controller so here's your battery leads here all called up and then we got our connectors to the solar panel and then I mounted this on a one by six piece of wood the top there's three holes that's so I can mount that to the bar 
and the little guy max compartment uh, for the battery and pro propane tank and then I also over here drilled some holes and put a tie wrap through there as a tension release so that it holds it from pulling it out because these cables here are going to be moved around at times and I did the same thing over here so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to end up uh, mounting this in the little guy hooking up the solar panels and uh, we'll be doing that soon before you uh, connect and plug and play all the parts two important things you have to do uh, one of them is check the solar panels to see they're working I have them in the Sun here and we have a Harbor Freight VOM and this panel is reading 21.6 open voltage you hook up the red connector to the VOM to the little red guy there it's positive and the black on the other one over here on the VOM you set it on 200 volts DC make sure it's on we're reading 21.6 I already read the other solar panel I was reading 22.2 so uh, once we get all this taken care of then we're gonna assemble it and plug and play it all together over here in the cabinet for the propane tank and battery box okay one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure that all your connections are correct for the solar charge controller assembly uh, we have is a uh, Harbor Freight VOM and you set it on 200 ohms over here right there and you this checks the resistance it should be pretty close to zero right now we're reading one which is sort of like infinity uh, this one here over here is connected on the positive lead going to the solar panel charge controller to the fuse and if we put it over here and go to the positive there then our meter is reading 0.4 ohms you do the same thing for all four connections. You take the negative and check the negative lead for the solar panel, and you do the same thing for the battery leads on the positive, red, and negative. And it checks the entire assembly. So our assembly's all set. So now we can uh, go ahead and put it all together and plug and play it, and we'll show you the solar controller working. Okay, here's the final stage for the uh, solar controller charger. This is your basic, basic setup. You got the controller. Uh, in the far part there, you see the battery leads coming out of the solar controller. Looking up to the battery. And the next set of leads there is to the solar panel, which I've went through the side of the cabinet. Over to here, to the solar panel. And then over here, a look at the solar controller now I put a board underneath here to prop it up so we can see the voltages cycling through but here's a zip tie around the bar on this side and on this side again just as a reminder battery is connected first before you connect the solar panel so here's the readout there and cycling through that's the battery there's the battery it's cycling on the battery okay that's the mode and there's your solar panel now at the top there is a select button you see it you can cycle through those three or four screens and the enter button is to change your parameters I have set mine set up as a flooded battery now all we have is the battery came in the little guy max it also will do uh, sealed and gel. Now, I have going to put below in the description some YouTube channels where they're going to go through the details on it. They do a better job on it. And um, that one there also includes lithium, so they must be a higher version than I bought. So I'll have all the parts and pieces below in the description that I bought. And then just one last thing over here. 
these are some cables I bought. The one on the left is a 24 cable. Two in the center are your Y connectors to run two parallel panels. One on the right is five, five foot. And then of course on the solar controller, we've already included the bare end to hook up to the solar panel here. So now I want to go inside and show you. I had shown you two in parts and pieces is this voltage monitor here. It tells me that the battery is at 12.6 and that's right inside the little guy max and it also provides a USB port and another charging port. So it's really convenient. You don't have to go out underneath the cabinet to take a look at what your battery voltage is. Now with lead acid, 50% is where you should stop using the battery. And for lead acid, it's 12 or 12.1 for depending on what battery you bought. So this guy here is a nice little handy thing here to use. Now our next episode is gonna be to hook up the communication port on the solar charge controller for Bluetooth so that you'll be able to put an app on your phone and you'll be able to monitor it to that inside. It'll have the, the voltage and the current for the battery, for the, for the solar cell. It also has a history so you can see the different charging that goes on from day to day. That'll be our next episode. So if you like our video, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Have a nice day. Thank you.